time to do science. Once I get to lab, the snow boots come off, and the science shoes go on. And most importantly, I gotta wear a lab coat. Well, actually, no I don't. Currently, I'm trying to use real-time PCR to measure the amount of mRNA that's present in my experimental assays. These experimental assays are the ones where I'm exposing my transformed diatoms to ammonium, and I want to see if there's a change in gene expression between the control and the cells that receive ammonium. From my experimental assays, I have a whole bunch of frozen cells from which I can extract RNA. Now, I'm only interested in the mRNA, and I want to measure it somehow. PCR is a great way to quantify DNA, but you can't PCR a reaction with single-stranded um, nucleic acid. However, I can turn single-stranded RNA into DNA using the enzyme reverse transcriptase. I can then use this cDNA in real-time PCR to quantify it. Real-time PCR is a lot like our standard endpoint PCR, in which we use primers to amplify specific regions of DNA. However, real-time PCR incorporates a special dye into the double-stranded DNA that's amplified. This dye is then read as fluorescence in a special real-time PCR machine. The real-time PCR machine can then read the amount of fluorescence at each cycle of the PCR reaction and tell us how much DNA is being made at each step. So essentially, we're seeing DNA being amplified in real time, hence why it's called real-time PCR. This essentially allows us to quantify the amount of starting template in the PCR reaction, thus telling us how much mRNA we had to start with, which then we can use to make direct comparisons. For the most part, um, the amount of starting DNA template in standard PCR has little effect on um, whether you'll see positive or negative results. What that means is standard PCR is good for a positive or negative result. Yeah, we have DNA, or no, we don't have DNA. But real time is showing the level of DNA at each cycle of the reaction so we can tell differences in the starting template level. I started running real time PCR reactions before winter break and I had some okay initial results. The primaries used to amplify endogenous regions of cDNA worked really, really well and they paralleled with um, already established changes in mRNA in our diatoms. So essentially, my controls are working really, really well. However, I can't get my experimental primers to amplify the DNA that I need it to. Essentially, the primers are just binding to each other and making a mess, and it's not the results that we want just yet. So I'm here in lab designing new primers that will work slightly differently. Going back to the reverse transcriptase reaction from which we make uh, cDNA from mRNA, um, it's a little different. When we make the cDNA from mRNA, reverse transcriptase starts at the 3' prime end and works backward to make the complementary DNA. But eventually that reverse transcriptase is going to fall off the molecule and maybe not quite make it all the way and make the complete double-stranded mole molecule that we need. This means two things. One, the primers that I'm making should amplify a very small region of DNA to ensure that it can amplify both ends. And two, the primer should aim for the three prime end of that molecule because that's where the re reverse transcriptase is starting. After I'm finished designing the primers and I get them in the mail, I'll start a whole new set of real-time PCR reactions. And hopefully these primers work much better, so it's a matter of doing a lot of grinding. Not grinding anything, uh, I mean grinding in that I'll need to do a whole bunch of reactions and try to collect all the data that I need. And once I get this data, it's really onwards to the writing process if my results work out the way I want them to. And really, that's all I can hope for right now is that my primers work and I get the data and I can go on to writing because it's going to be a very tight fit this semester. Right now, we're nearing the end of January, but I need to defend and um, pass in my thesis by very early April. So the time frame for finishing my project looks something a little bit like this. It'd be great if I can finish all of my science lab work by the end of February. So that gives me the first few weeks of March to um, put together my thesis, complete with figures and everything, um, write a presentation, and give that presentation in front of uh, my colleagues and whatnot and professors, treat my thesis to their liking, and pass it in to be printed and whatnot. But if I complete my thesis on time and everything's all good, I have like a month of nothing. Well, actually a little more than a month. It'd be like six or seven weeks between finishing my thesis and graduating with my master's. I can only imagine what I'm going to do with that time. Oh, did you see me? I'm not rogue. Stupid night owl. 
I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll probably do science then. 